I, I am the proud host pastor of the Craddock Civic League. Uh, in fact, this Tuesday, we will be hosting the Craddock Civic League here at 82 After Parkway, Portsmouth, Virginia, 23702. Uh, but this is not the only Civic League that I'm affiliated with. I am also the chaplain of the Cavalier Manor Civic League, and I am the chaplain of the Cavalier Manor Civic League uh, because I purchased a house in Cavalier Manor. And I like to be involved wherever I lay my head. I, I'm not one of those folks who moves into a neighborhood and complains about what's going on in the neighborhood. I move into the neighborhood and I do something about what's going on in the neighborhood. Of course, I pray, but I also get involved in whatever is going on in that neighborhood. Well, as nice of a neighborhood as Cavalier Manor is, uh, we, we got some folks that, that aren't the best neighbors. Yes, I bought a really nice house in Cavalier Manor and on one side, there, there was an older couple who uh, were very sweet. Anytime they were cooking out, they would offer uh, a plate to me. They would offer any refreshments, any snacks, any desserts they had. Just, just all around good couple on this side. Oh, but on this side. <laughs> it was a bunch of young brothers. And I love my young brothers. I'm a young brother. But I, I would notice that something would happen in the wintertime. They were the best neighbors. I had no issue with them in the wintertime. Oh, but when the weather changed, when it got a little warm outside, they didn't care what time of night it was. They would be outside, cars running like gas don't cost what it costs, blaring loud music. Now, I got to work in the morning. I ain't got time to be up all night listening to loud music. I had some noisy neighbors. And I don't know if you've ever lived in a neighborhood with folks who played music all times of the night, invited folks who don't even live in the neighborhood to the neighborhood, turning up in front of your house, playing all. I don't know if that's ever been your experience, but I did not like living next to noisy neighbors. Now, some of you are saying, Pastor Mike, we didn't come here to hear you vent about your no your noisy neighbors. And you're right, you did not. Uh, but there's a lot in common between what was happening to me uh, in Cavalier Manor and, and what God is calling for in this text. Mm -hmm. I realized uh, in, happy, uh, in hindsight, as I looked back over that situation and I began to ask God as I was preparing this sermon, God, why is it that you brought that back to my recollect, uh, recollection? And he says, son, it's because you missed the revelation. I said, God, what do you mean I missed the revelation? They was getting on my last nerve. Every time the weather would turn, they would play, and not just any kind of music, I'm talking trap music, just violent, dangerous music, gunshots in the background. I don't know what's going to sound like World War Three outside my house. God, God, what do you mean I miss the revelation? Who in the world would want to live next to a noisy neighbor? He says, son, you don't realize what was happening. I said, God, what was happening? Uh, notice the time frame by which they started becoming noisy. I said, what do you mean? He said, in the wintertime, there was no noise. Oh, but when the summertime came, there was noise. I said, God, what are you saying? He said, they made noise when the season changed. Oh, my God. Yes, sir. Oh, my God. Hmm. And he said, my church house would be a lot better if they functioned like your neighbors. I said, what do you mean? If every time I switch the season, they would make some noise. The problem God has with us on today is that every so often he will switch our season around and we will walk into a new season with an old praise. And God is saying in this season, as I begin switching seasons, baby, I need y'all to make some noise. I need y'all to disturb the peace. And this is why we had to cut a whole fool this morning, because I'm declaring over somebody's life. I ain't going to look at nobody, whoever just wants to grab it, that God is about to turn your season around. And when God turns your season around, I dare you to act like my old neighbors. I dare you to praise God late in the midnight hour, believing that he's going to turn it around. I dare you to get on your neighbor's last word. I dare you to shout so loud that the apartment above you and underneath you calls the front office on you. And when they call the front office and they give you a letter, I want you to go down to the rental office and say, if you knew what the Lord was doing for me, you would praise him too. I don't like living next to noisy neighbors, but I believe that when we come to church, God wants us sitting next to noisy neighbors. 
it's an opportunity to switch your seat if you're sitting by somebody bougie. Uh, I want to share with you three reasons you ought to be a noisy neighbor. Can I can I talk just a little bit this morning? I'm going to try not to keep you long. Uh, three reasons you ought to be a noisy neighbor. If you're taking notes, three reasons you ought to be a noisy neighbor. Now, now, now before I can get into these three reasons why you want to be a noisy neighbor, I first got to kind of give us a definition of what a joyful noise is. Okay. Because we hear the church say it all the time, you know, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands, and, and y'all just be looking at them strange. But you know what? I'm going to give you a pass because I've come to the realization you don't know what a joyful noise is. Yeah. And so now after I break it down, I pray we don't have no more discrepancies in the future because we're going to all know what a joyful noise is. So before I can get to these three reasons, I'm going to just break it down. What is a joyful noise? Verse 4 says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. I'm going to start at the bottom. Uh, all the earth, not some of the earth, but all the earth, make a loud noise and rejoice and sing praise. Uh, now, this bless me, this this word uh, or these, these words that are translated joyful noise actually comes from the Hebrew word ruah, R-U-A, ruah. And I'm going to tell you why that bless me, because ruah is close to the word ruach. Uh -huh. ah, now, unless you've heard a couple of my sermons, I reference that word ruach every so often. That word ruach is breath. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. And it is specifically the breath of God. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, he says, ruah, ruach. In other words, when you make a joyful noise, what you are doing is giving God back the breath that wow. he gave you. Okay. Yes, my God, I thought I was in a church. <laughs> this is why I can't keep my mouth closed when I come to the house of God. Because I've come to the conclusion that I'm not breathing because my lungs work. I'm breathing because God breathed yes. the breath of life into me. And since God made a deposit into me this morning, I ought to make a deposit unto him. I don't hear nobody. Yes, a joyful noise is ruah. And that word ruah, watch this, it means to raise a shout. Now, it doesn't just mean to raise a shout, but I told you the Hebrew language is very picturesque. There's always some sort of picture that goes with the word and this word. Uh, word ruah, it means to raise a shout, but specifically like a clarion. Mm. Now, a clarion is a particular type of horn. A clarion specifically is a war horn. Okay, so he says, make a joyful noise, ruah, unto the Lord. A, 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 a blast, a trumpet sound, but not just any sound, a war trumpet. I told y'all a couple of weeks ago that your worship is your warfare. And might it be so that the reason some of us are in so much warfare is because we're doing so little worship. Ah, he says, uh, make a joyful noise, blast a trumpet sound. In other words, I need you, and this is why they use a clarion, I need you to make a sound in heaven that will then call forth the army of hosts. Oh, y'all don't know what that is. The army of hosts is an army of angels. In other words, what you want to do when you enter into the house of God is open up your mouth. Give God back the breath he gave you. And because you give God back the breath he gave you, you make a sound in heaven. But not just any sound. It's a sound that lets the angels know it's war time. If you would open up your mouth, watch this, you wouldn't have to close up your fist. Because you would begin to make a sound in heaven. And all of heaven would get behind you. I thought I was in a church. And even if they outnumbered you, they can't outnumber heaven. I'm reminded of the prophet who had his servant with him. And the Bible says they were surrounded by an army. And the servant started to get nervous. And he said, Master, what are we going to do? We are outnumbered. And the, uh, the, the prophet looked to heaven and said, God, open up his eyes to see that there's more for us than there are against us. And the Bible says something crazy happened. The servant eyes opened. And what he saw was the heavenly host uh, surrounding the army that was surrounding them. What am I? saying you ought to make a joyful noise unto the Lord because no matter how outnumbered you may be by your bills no matter how outnumbered you might be by your foes, no matter how outnumbered you may be by your problems, when you open up your mouth and make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all of heaven begins to respond on your behalf and the fight that you thought you was going to have to fight, all you got to do is walk in and be declared a winner. He says it's a ruah. 
Make a joyful noise. You got to give God back the breath that he gave you, but also blast the trumpet sound that lets the angels know it is wartime. And I would argue that some of you have angels that are just waiting to fight on your behalf, but because you will not open up your mouth, you are fighting fights that you ain't got no business fighting. You are wrestling things you have no business wrestling. You are struggling and stuff you have no business struggling. I wish the people of God would understand that we are not just citizens of the United States of America, but we are citizens of the kingdom of God. And because we're citizens of the kingdom of God, we have access to resources, access to weapons. The Bible says it this way, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty for the pulling down of strongholds. Baby, put your fist away and open up your mouth and let heaven fight for you. That's what it is, but, but but how do we make a joyful noise? How do we make a joyful noise? It's right there in verse 4. It says the first way to make a joyful noise is it got to be loud. <laughs> oh, the problem some of y'all have is y'all too quiet. And listen, I know y'all think that preachers just like to fill the church with a whole lot of noise. But the truth of the matter is, we ain't trying to help ourselves. Baby, we trying to help you. Because there's no such thing as a joyful noise that's silent. There's no such thing as a joyful noise that we can barely hear. I wish we would just practice that for a few moments. Because when he says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. In other words, what he's saying is, heaven is a long way away from here. So I need you to make a noise that goes all the way from earth. All the way to heaven. Why? Because the Bible says that the angels are around his throne singing the song, holy, 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 the Lord God Almighty. We got competition with the angels, and the devil is alive. I won't let the rocks cry out in my place, and I won't let an angel be louder than me. He says, if you're going to make a joyful noise unto the Lord, baby, it got to be loud. But, but, but not just loud. It has to be a rejoicing. Yes. It has to be a rejoicing. Okay, y'all, y'all don't know how to break words down. Uh, rejoice, rejoice. Now, re is a prefix which means again. So, joyce again. Joyce is an extension of the word joy. So, in other words, when he says you have to rejoice, what he's saying is you got to get your joy again. So, when I make a joyful noise to the Lord, what I'm doing is I'm getting my joy again. Y'all miss it. I'm getting my joy again. And I, when you are joyful, you don't murmur that thing. When you are joyful, you don't whisper that thing. Can I tell you why some of y'all ain't got no joy? Because you won't open up your mouth and make a loud noise unto the Lord. And here's the thing about getting your joy again. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. My God, when I get my joy back, I get my strength back. And if you would just open up your mouth today, God would start pouring his joy back into you. And you would walk into the office confident tomorrow that if God be for you, he's more than they that are against you. You will be confident that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivers me out of them all. You'd be confident knowing that I've been young and I've been old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor see begging bread. When you open up your mouth and make a joyful noise, what you're doing is opening up your mouth that heaven might pour your joy back in. It's loud, it's rejoicing, but 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 it's also praise. It's, right. it's, it's praise. It says saying praise. In other words, I don't just open up my mouth to cry my problems out, but I open up my mouth to praise him. Okay, so watch this. It's very specific. What praise is, uh, it's me telling God how awesome he is. Because watch this. When I tell God how awesome he is, I forget how bad my problems are. When I make a joyful noise unto the Lord, I feel the atmosphere with everything he is. God, you are a way maker. God, you are a bridge over troubled water. God, you are the lion of Judah. God, you are the great shepherd. God, you are the great I am. God, you are alpha and omega. God, you are the beginning and the end. God, you are the first and the last. God, you are the lily of the valley. God, you are the rose of Sharon. God, you are the great I am. And when I feel the atmosphere with every Everything that God is, baby, I forget what all my problems are. The reason y'all so stressed out is because you fill an atmosphere with everything your problems are instead of filling the atmosphere with who your provider is. Okay, so that's that's what a joyful noise is. That's that's how we do it. So we don't have no questions about that no more. I'm gonna give, go ahead and give you these three reasons you ought to be a noisy neighbor. Y'all ready? Yeah. All right. Listen. The first reason you want to be a noisy neighbor is because he has done marvelous things. Yes. Yes. 
Some of y'all know what marvelous means. Jesus. He has done marvelous. Tell somebody that. Say neighbor. Neighbor. Oh, God has done marvelous things. God has done marvelous things. God, listen, when the last time somebody done something marvelous for you? It says, my God has done marvelous things. I'm not making it up. Verse 1 says, oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Listen, can I pause right there real quick? Uh, uh, I, I'm one of them folks who believe that everything in the Bible has a reason. Nothing is just put there for no reason. Uh, the psalmist says, oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Now, I, I, y'all know I like to talk to the text. And so I'm like, why is it that we have to sing a new song? I, you know, that bothered me for a little bit because ain't nothing wrong with the old. Y'all know how the, the church of old say ain't nothing like the old hymns. And, you know, ain't nothing like the blood that gives me strength from day to day. Ain't, ain't nothing like amazing grace. How sweet the sound. It, old songs is where it's at, according to the previous generation. But but the psalmist says, sing unto him a new song, a new song. Ooh, a new song. Why, God, should we sing a new song? Because he said, behold, I do a new thing. <laughs> And the reason you're not seeing nothing new in your life because you keep singing old songs. Baby, don't get me wrong. Ain't nothing wrong with going back every so often and getting your hymn on. But every so often, you ought to look at all the new things that God is doing and you ought to just make up a song for the Lord. Oh, my God. I thank you that you are my bill payer. Yes, you are. It was Destiny's child who said, bills, bills, bills. Can you pay my telephone bills? Can you pay my automobile? Maybe we can chill. Maybe you ought to just sing that again. God, God, bills, bills, bills. You paid my telephone bill. You paid my automobile. I'm so glad that we can share. You ought to sing God a new song every so often because God is always doing a new thing. But not just a new thing. He's doing marvelous things. Marvelous things. I, I say, God, what is this word? Marvelous. That's that's a word we don't use enough. I, I, the closest I came to it was Marvel. I love the Marvel movies. Uh, 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 but, but what is this thing? Marvelous. And it's the word pala, pala. And that word pala doesn't just mean marvelous, but it means to be surpassing or extraordinary. Okay. In essence, he says, uh, you ought to give a joyful noise unto the Lord. Because God is doing something surpassing. Okay, uh, the Bible says this way. Now unto him that can do exceeding, abundantly, above all you can ask or think. Oh my God. Okay, so he says you ought to make a joyful noise unto the Lord because he's always doing more than you ask for. Here's why only a couple of y'all can shout on that. Because... The more that he does ain't always what you want. Come on. And the problem is you think God ain't doing more because he's not doing it in the area that you want him to do. It. And we got to be mindful that we don't get to a place where we're so fixated on one type of blessing that we miss all the other blessings that he's doing over on the other side. Can, can, can we just be honest right now? I don't know about you, uh, 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 but I, I live a very sedentary lifestyle. I'm not as active as I need to be, but don't none of my bones hurt? Ain't nothing cracking when I move? What am I saying? God has blessed me with better health than I deserve. And it may not be more money in my bank account, but he has surpassed what I should have. Oh my God, the truth of the matter is some of us got us a fine boo. And if we'll be honest, we really ain't the finest thing ourselves. But the truth of the matter is God did exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think. It ain't because we was all that. It's because he's all that. God is always doing more than we ask for. He may not do it in the area that you want, but he's always doing more than we ask for, but, but, but also extraordinary. God don't do nothing ordinary. There is not a, a single thing in your life that God has done that you can call ordinary. My God, and I don't know about you, but I'm so glad I serve a God who specializes in the extraordinary. And the truth of the matter is, I love that because sometimes my problems can be extra painful. Sometimes my issues can be extra stressful. Uh, sometimes my struggle can be extra struggle. Uh, but thanks be unto God that he doesn't leave all that extra in my life without bringing some extra of his own. And I, we serve a God who does more than we can imagine. Y'all will judge me for this, but it's all right. Uh, Y'all know I am a Chick-fil-A connoisseur. I am a signature member. Put some respect on my name. I spent a whole lot of money to be a signature member. For every one point you get, 
shit, I get like five points. I'm a signature Chick-fil-A member. And I don't know if this is one of the perks that comes with it, but one day I went to Chick-fil-A, I put my order in. I love their 12-piece chicken nugget. I really feel like they don't give you enough nuggets. I got a witness. I really feel like they don't give you enough nuggets because they 12 small nuggets, but, but they're big in flavor. I don't know what it is, but I love them 12 nuggets. And I've been trying to be healthy lately, so I've been getting the grilled ones. But, but my God, them fried ones though, listen, they say they cook it in peanut oil, but I believe it's olive oil because it's the anointing on the chicken nuggets. Nevertheless, I put my order in and I got to Chick-fil-A and they gave me my bag and I rolled off. Now, I'm one of the ones, I can't wait till I get home to eat Chick-fil-A. I'm eating out the bag while I'm in the car. And so I'm smashing the fries because I got to eat my fries first. Don't judge me. But I'm eating my fries first and then I get to the box of chicken nuggets. I ordered a 12-piece chicken nugget and I don't know why God smiled on me that day, but I opened the box up and inside the box was 12 20 nuggets. I don't even think they sell a 20 piece nugget, but I opened the box and it was 20 nuggets. And y'all missed the revelation. I ordered 12 nuggets, but I got eight extra nuggets, and eight is the number of new beginnings. I got 12 good nuggets and a new beginning. God surpassed what I asked for. Somebody shout new beginning. I count my food. Ain't gonna cheat me. You ought to make a joyful noise. Because he's done marvelous things. Even if it came in a Chick-fil-A box. Can I give you another one? You ought to make a joyful noise because he has given us mighty victories. He has given us mighty victories. I'm not making it up. In verse 1 it says, his right hand and his holy arm have gotten him the victory. Yes, God. Now the truth of the matter is that's good all by itself. But I got a problem with King James. Uh -oh. Very rarely do I have a problem with King James, especially when it comes to the Psalms, because my man usually get it right, but he got it wrong with this one. I looked at the Hebrew, and I discovered that this word uh, 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 where it says, gotten him the victory, is actually the word yasha. And that word yasha doesn't mean got the victory. It means yes. give the victory. Yes. Uh, I said that too fast. Let me try this again. It doesn't mean I got the victory. It means I was given the victory. Okay, I don't know if y'all understand how words work, so I'm going to try this one more time. It doesn't mean I got the victory. It means I was given the victory. Okay, here's the difference if you're still trying to catch up. If I got the victory, that means I did something for it. But if I was given the victory, that means somebody did the work for me. I'm so glad that I serve a God who says you ain't got to fight for it, you ain't got to wrestle for it, you ain't got to run for it, you ain't got to work for it. I will give you the victory. I, I need you to notice what you don't see here. It doesn't say by your right hand. It doesn't say by your holy arm, but it says by his right yeah. hand and by his holy arm. Okay, Bishop, the reason that blesses me is because I know my hands are limited. Uh -huh. And I know my hands are weak. Uh -huh. But God's hand is unlimited. Uh -huh. And God's arm ain't weak. Which means somebody can wrestle a victory away from me. But you can't wrestle a victory away from God. And Bishop, this is why I don't fight for myself no more. Because when I fight for myself, they might come take my victory back. But when I let God fight for me, my God, nobody can handle my God. My God is undefeated. My God has never taken an L. All he knows is victory. He says, um, by his right hand and his holy arm have gotten him the victory. Now, now, um... 
this 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 blesses me and, and it reminds me of a favorite movie of mine. In fact, I talked about I talked about this movie a couple weeks ago. It's a movie that's called Dodgeball, an underdog story. And um, pretty much the premise of the movie is that there is a gym owner who really doesn't make enough money to keep the gym open. And they get a notice that they're about to close the gym. And one of the partners of the gym comes up with a crazy idea. There's a saw, uh, uh, excuse me, a dodgeball tournament that's coming up, and the grand prize is fifty thousand dollars. If we can just win this dodgeball tournament, we can win fifty thousand dollars, which ironically was the exact amount they needed to keep the gym. So, in order to get a, uh, to become a part of this tournament, they had to qualify. So they go to the qualifying match, and they only have one comp. Uh, one person that's competition to them. Uh, it's so funny. They walk in, they, they're stretching, they're warming up, and all of a sudden the competition walks in and it's the Girl Scouts. <laughs> a gym full of grown men have to play dodgeball against the Girl Scouts. Well, believe it or not, the Girl Scouts won. Kick their butt all over the gym. But here's the part I love about it. After they get to the point where they're about to declare, no, excuse me, they actually declare the Girl Scouts the winner, somebody walked in, they were blowing a whistle, and they said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, the drug test just came back. And one of the Girl Scouts failed the drug test. And because she failed the drug test, they declared the gym full of guys a winner. Okay, y'all missed the revelation. I've been fighting the devil a long time. And one thing I've discovered is that the devil don't play fair. But thanks be unto God that when the devil don't play fair, God disqualifies him and declares me the winner. I am only here today because the devil don't play fair. Can I encourage somebody on today? Because some of you have been saying, God, this ain't fair. Instead of complaining, you ought to start shouting. Because when the devil starts playing dirty, God starts playing divinely. And when God starts playing divinely, he turns the table. And when you, the enemy you thought was winning, you'll find out you won against him. We serve a God who doesn't just allow us to get the victory, he gives us the victory. Some of you, as you walk into the office tomorrow, ought to shout all the way up the stage. Because your, your resume didn't get you that job. God gave it to you. When you drop some of your kids off at school, you ought to shout. Because you ain't make enough money for that private school. God put them in that private school. You ought to give God praise every time you look at your good thing. Because you knew your game wasn't really that tight. You didn't get that boo. God gave you that boo. And so I make a joyful noise unto the Lord because he has given me a mighty victory. Let's help some of y'all out in your relationship. Gave you my God-given victory. Yes, sir. He won you just for me. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, Lord. We ought to make a joyful noise because he's done marvelous things. Because he has given us mighty victories. Can I give you one more? Yeah. Because he has made known his salvation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's it. Now, now, in a church full of saved folks, I expected more hand clapping. So y'all saved for real? Amen. Okay, just check him. Uh, he has made known his salvation. Verse 2, it says, The Lord hath made known his salvation, his righteousness hath he openly showed in the sight of the heathen. My God. Yes, sir. So we really showed us. I'm going to read this slow. Mm -hmm. The Lord hath made known his salvation. His salvation. His righteousness hath he openly showed in the sight of the heathen. You should know something. Y'all are too calm for me right now. You should know something. Because um, I don't know all y'all testimonies. I know all y'all been heathen. 
And you might not have heathen on the same level. I heathen. But we all heathen. You know you were heathen. We done all had a heathen season. So you can sit there and look bougie all you want to. The Bible doesn't say he made known his salvation to the righteous. It says he made known his salvation to the ratchet. Now, 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 some of, now don't tell on yourself. Some of us, I think some of us got this thing wrong. Okay. See, see, we think Jesus came to save the church folk. Yeah. 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 We think Jesus came yeah. to save the folk who ain't got no testimony. Yeah. That ain't what Jesus said. He, he said, I come not to condemn the world, but that through me the world might be saved. Yeah. Yet we've grown up in churches where we condemn the very people Jesus said he came to save. That's mind blowing to me because this says that he made known his salvation to the heathen. Okay. Come on. In other words, you ought to make a joyful noise. Because God gave good news to bad people. <laughs> and I know that didn't resonate with you because you came up in one of these new age churches that told you want nothing wrong with you, that you're not a sinner, and that God loves you in spite of whatever you do. And all that sounds wonderful. But Paul said, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And Paul also wrote that the wages of sin is death. Ooh, but here's the shout. But the gift of God is eternal life. Oh, my God. It's a gift. I ain't got to pay for it. I ain't got to work for it. But if I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart on the Lord Jesus Christ, I shall be saved. He gave good news to bad people. And some of us can't shout because the only reason we feel good about ourselves is when we make other folks feel bad about who they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you're not going to hear this sort of message in religious churches because religious churches have hierarchies where, where I'm up here and you down here and I stay up here by reminding you of how long you've been down here. Okay. Um, I, I didn't get into the Hebrew yet. Um, the word for salvation in the Hebrew is the word, amen, give him praise. It's the word Yeshua. Yeshua. Uh -huh. Yeshua. Yes, sir. The Lord hath made known Yeshua. Uh -huh. The Lord hath made known Yeshua. Okay, here's the problem, Bishop. We in the Psalms. Yes. And Yeshua yes, is, is, is just the original language name. Of Jesus. Yes, sir. Okay. He says, the Lord has made known Jesus mm -hmm. to the heathen. Y'all are too calm for me. Yeshua is not just a word. Yeah. It's a name. Yeah. And he said, I've made known, don't miss this. I've made known my best yes, to the worst. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. So great. I should have made known hell to you, but I made known my son. Yes. And when you weren't willing to give anything for me, I gave the best I had to yes. you. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Let's see if I can make this plain. Um. I don't think I've ever been in legal trouble. Look back over my life real quick. Okay. I've never been in legal trouble, but I'm very familiar 
with legal terms and legal processes. And every so often, I will hear a term, case dismissed. Case dismissed is when a judge declares that a case is thrown out. Now that's that's shoutable all by itself. Yes. But y'all know me, I like to go a little deeper. And and so I said, why would someone dismiss a case? I mean, if the person is guilty, then they ought to be prosecuted. Makes sense to me. Why would someone dismiss a case? Well, I discovered that there's a couple of reasons that a judge may decide to dismiss a case. The first reason a judge might dismiss a case is lack of probable cause. In other words, in criminal cases, dismissal could occur if there is insufficient evidence establishing probable cause that indicates there has been a crime and indicates it was likely committed by the defendant. Okay, in other words, that was a whole lot of big words for no reason. A lack of probable cause means that we could not find enough evidence to prove that you're guilty. Don't miss that. Doesn't mean you ain't guilty. Just means I couldn't find enough evidence to prove that you're guilty. That's one reason. There's another reason called civil procedure violations. Civil procedure violations is failing to adhere to legal procedures could result in dismissal. In other words, if, if a lawyer does something uh, uh, out of turn or out of sequence, then it could lead to the case being dismissed. If they uh, uh, admit certain evidence that should not have been admitted, even if the evidence proves you're guilty, if they admitted it at the wrong part of the procedure, the evidence can't be used against you because they did it out of order. But there's one more. There's one more. The last one is a a settlement agreement. Wow. A settlement agreement is when parties engaged in civil lawsuits may reach an amicable resolution during preliminary negotiations and opt out of the proceeding leading to dismissal. In other words, before it even goes to trial, we can have it kicked out because the two parties involved came to an agreement. Okay, I said, God, what are you saying? He said, well, let's let's break these things down. Uh, uh, lack of probable cause. I said, well, God, that certainly can't be me because I know the evidence exists against me. And y'all can sit there and look at me strange if you want to. But the truth of the matter is the devil got evidence on all of us. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 it won't just you and your cut buddy there. The devil was there as well. Yes, sir. It won't just you and that fine thing. The devil was there. It, it, it won't just you and your homeboy. The devil was there. Uh, he has evidence that he can hold against all of us. So it can't be probable cause that I'm here today. And then there was civil procedure violations. Well, the devil been doing this a long time. Mm -hmm. So I know ain't no way he don't know how the game is played. Mm -hmm. And so whenever he goes to God uh, 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 on, on our behalf to, to make accusations, because the Bible says he's an accuser of the brethren, he comes with a game that's airtight. Mm -hmm. He don't have no loopholes in his game. So it can't be civil procedure violations that I'm here today, Bishop. Oh, but this settlement agreement. Oh, Something just started to move in my oh, spirit. Come on. And I'm going to tell you why I got excited about that one because even though there was probable cause, yeah. even though there were no civil procedure yeah. violations the Bible says that an agreement was made. Can I tell you who made the agreement? It's the same one I told you about earlier. His name is Yeshua. The Bible says he's ascended to the right hand of the Father and he's making intercession for me. But here's the thing uh, the only way he could get to the right hand of the Father is that a good Friday came. On, and on that good Friday, he got a mock trial. In other words, he was declared guilty even though he was innocent. Yeah. But they didn't realize what they was doing because by declaring him guilty, they in turn declared me innocent. Yeah. They're guilty for me. But that ain't it, Bishop. After the mock trial, the Bible says they beat them. They whipped them. But they didn't realize what they was doing. Because when they beat them and they whipped them, it was for my healing. The Bible says the chastisement of our peace was upon Christ. And by his stripes, I'm healed. But that won't it, Bishop. They had the nerve to put them on a cross. And when they put them on the cross, 
They put nails in his feet, nails in his hand, tied him to the cross, lifted it up. But they forgot what the scripture says. If I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. They lifted him up. And because they lifted him up, my God. The settlement was real. <laughs> See, y'all missed it. After he said, into thy hands I depart my spirit, he also said, it is finished. In other words, he said, I am the payment for the sin death. And because Jesus was willing to pay with his blood, a settlement was reached. And when the father saw the blood, he said, case dismissed. Baby, the only reason I'm here today is not because I won't be guilty, but Jesus reached a settlement for me, and he settled with his blood. I'm so glad about it, and this is why we sing the old song, I know it was the blood, I know it was the blood, I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, Jesus died on the cross. And I know it was the blood for me. Oh, but another song says it reaches to the highest mountain. It flows to the lowest valley. And the truth of the matter is, I've been lower than low. But the blood that gives me strength from day to day will never lose its power. <laughs> Somebody say he settled it. He settled it. So watch this. Stop arguing with folks who remember what you used to do. Because he settled. Stop tripping when folks bring your past up. He settled it. Stop going back and forth with nonsense. He settled it. All right, 12:15. It's 1215. My God, my God. It's 1215. Um, like this phase. Yeah, yeah. 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 Ah, it's verse three. My God. Um, if we're going to make a joyful noise unto the Lord, we ought to do it because he's done marvelous things. We ought to do it because he's given us mighty victories. Yeah. We ought to do it because he has made known his salvation, yeah. even when I didn't deserve his salvation. But last but not least, because he's mindful of his mercy and truth. Yeah. Yeah. He's mindful of his mercy and his truth. Come on, sir. Okay. Verse three, it says, he hath remembered his mercy and his truth toward the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Yes. So if I'm not mistaken, I want to say either last week or week before last, we looked at this word uh, for mercy. His mercy is the Hebrew word kindness. It's the word kindness. So in essence, he says he has remembered his kindness. And I don't know about you, but God's kindness is a little different from people's kindness. Can I tell you why God's kindness is different from people's kindness? Because people's kindness is conditional. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, folks will be kind to you so long as they're comfortable around you. Uh -huh. yeah. Folks will be kind to you so long as you got something to offer them. Yeah. Folks will be kind to you so long as you look like them, smell like them, talk like them, walk like them. Folks will be kind to you as long as the conditions are right. Oh, but God is so kind to us. God isn't kind to us because we're so kind. He's kind to us when we're unkind. God is kind to us when we're yet his enemies. God is kind to us while we're yet sinners. God is kind to us when we showing all the way off. God is kind to us when we cussing folks out. God is kind to us when we scr uh, scrapping in the street. God is kind to us when we cheating on our taxes. Don't look at nobody. God is kind to us. <laughs> When we post in ratchet stuff on social media, I'm so glad that his kindness is not conditional. But it's not just his kindness that he remembers. It says he remembers uh, 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 his truth. Now, this word truth is interesting. King James translates it truth, but it's the Hebrew word imuna. And that word imuna means firmness, steadfastness, and fidelity. Now, if you was listening to sermons ago, uh -huh. you would remember this word fidelity. Uh, fidelity. This word fidelity means faithfulness. Yes, sir. So in other words, he says, the Lord has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness 
towards his people. Yes, sir. Okay, y'all must not be his people, but I'm his people. And the text says that he has remembered his mercy, uh, excuse me, his kindness and his faithfulness to me. Okay, here's why you ought to be shouting. Because there's a whole lot of stuff that God could remember about you. Yes. Yes, sir. But instead of remembering you, what he, he knows about you, yes, sir. he remembers about himself. Y'all yes. yes. ah, are too cold for me this morning. Y'all must be tired from the shout earlier. He don't remember stuff about me. Yes, sir. He just reminds himself about stuff about him. And what he's chosen to remember yes. as it relates to me, he first remembers how kind he is to me. Yes, sir. Okay. So even when I'm unkind to other people, he doesn't remember my unkindness. He just remembers how kind he should be to me. Yes. But, but, but not just that. He doesn't remember my unfaithfulness. That in place of my unfaithfulness, he reminds himself of how faithful he is to me. Oh yes, sir. Thank mm -hmm. you, I'm going to make this plain and we're going to get out of here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she said it's lunchtime. <laughs> There's a medical term called amnesia. Mm -hmm. And the definition of amnesia is a loss of memory do usually to brain injury, shock, fatigue, repression, or illness. Mm -hmm. So you can find yourself the victim of amnesia if you take one too many hits to the head. Right. Some of us been there. <laughs> one of the ways you get amnesia is some sort of trauma to the brain. I said, this is interesting, God. Why are you showing me this? He said, uh, because I have amnesia. Mm -hmm. And I said, wait a minute. God, that don't make sense. Cause, cause who done hit God in the head? That don't. I ain't got no scripture for that, God. You gonna have to help me. Cause, cause how you got amnesia? He said I got amnesia, but he says I have convenient amnesia. So I had to look up what convenient amnesia was, and I discovered that convenient amnesia is a slang term that we throw around for folks who act like they forgot something that they should know. Oh, okay. For instance, so so when somebody owe you money, but you call them back. And they want to talk about everything except the money they owe you. Yes, sir. That's convenient amnesia. Yes, okay, when, when, when folks tell a story of, of why y'all fell out, and they tell them everything that you did, but don't say nothing they did, that's convenient amnesia. God said, I got convenient amnesia. I said, well, what's the difference? He said, regular amnesia is when you lose your memory. But convenient amnesia is when you choose your memory. I'm so glad. Yes, sir. And I will continue to make a joyful noise unto God. Because I know he didn't lose his memory. But when it comes to me, he chooses it. He ain't forgot what I did in my past. He just chooses to focus yeah. on my future. He didn't forget all my ratchet ways. He just chooses to think about the righteousness of Christ Jesus. He didn't forget what I did, who I did it with, and when I did it. He just chooses to see what he called me to be from my mother's womb. And you ought to get up on your feet today. You ought to put your hands together. And you ought to irritate your neighbor this morning because you serve a God who has convenient amnesia. He ain't forgot what you've done, but he remembers who he is to you. He ain't forgot where you've been. He just remembers where he's sending you. He ain't forgot who you used to be. He just recognizes who he's made you to be. And no matter how many people won't forget what you've done, Yes. I'm so glad God yes. chooses yes. to forget yes. what I've done. Thank you. Yes, sir. So I come into the house of the Lord yes. and I make a joyful you say that. Yes. because some of y'all remember yes, uh -huh. who I used to be. Yes. But I know he's chosen to focus on yes. who I am today. Yes. Baby, y'all can whisper all through these pews you what you want to whisper. Yes. But while you whispering, I'm going to be shouting. Hello. Because I remember, even though he chose to remember. Yeah. And this is why he says he throws it into the sea of forgetfulness. Yeah. 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 
I'm so glad. So glad. Because this is another way my case can get dismissed. Yes, sir. He says, I remember, but I threw away the evidence. <laughs> Baby, you can talk all you want. Yes, sir. But my God destroyed the evidence. Yes. And this is why half y'all don't look like what you've been through. Because he threw away the evidence. <laughs> Baby, if you told your story, folks wouldn't believe it. But it's only because he destroyed the evidence. And because he destroyed the evidence, you ought to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Because the devil said, I got proof that he did it. The devil said, I got proof that she did it. He said, well, all you can do is talk about it because I took the proof. This is the reason I don't trip when folks talk about me. Yes, sir. Because they can't prove what they talking about. Yes, sir. So, baby, you can talk to your blue in the face. I'm going to open up my mouth. And I'm going to give God praise. And if you sit next to me on Sunday, baby, I need you to know. You might have to call the rent office on me. You might got to call the HOA on me. You might got to call the police on me. Because, baby, you sitting next to a noisy neighbor. And I don't plan on stopping no time soon. When I think on the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul's going to cry out hallelujah because I thank God for saving me. Will you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor? Neighbor. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But you sat next to me. You sat next to me. A noisy neighbor. Show your neighbor who you are. Give God praise.